Hello guys, thank you very much for joining in. We're going to be doing a quick session on how to revise the entire investment management book for your FRM level two, okay? So there are six books in your FRM level two. And out of that, I'm currently going to focus on the one particular book, which is your investment management and risk management book, okay? So what is going to be the agenda for today? We're going to be talking about the bifurcations of chapters. So I'll take the entire book and I will bifurcate individual bucket. I will create a bucket of chapters and so that those chapters are related to your preparation. Okay. And the order of revision, how should you start preparing for this book? Okay. And what should you keep in mind when you're looking at reading the individual concepts or individual chapter in that bucket? What should be the logic and what should be the understanding? I'll be also talking about that. The next is important concepts per chapter. This is a very important part of the video where I will be Ask, I'll be taking you through the individual chapters and I will be highlighting what is the most important concept learning or learning objective wise for that particular chapter. Then I will also be talking about the entire, if you look at the entire book, what are the top five chapters which are which I feel is important for the exam and also the top five concepts for the exam and for some final tips from my side with respect to preparing for the uh, this book for your FRM level two exam. So let us start with our discussion. So we're going to be talking about the bifurcation of chapter. Okay. Now, if you look at this entire book, investment management book, the book primarily starts with some factor related concept, concept. Okay. For the exam, the order of preparation has to be as per the book's order, but I will tell you what is the concept which they want you to understand. So if you look at the first bucket, which is the factor related chapters, which primarily includes two chapters, factor theory and factor. So this entire book is covering the portfolio management logic. And what they're first explaining you is that what exactly is a factor and how exactly when you hold an asset, you're actually holding a factor. So if you're holding a bond, you're holding interest rate. Okay, so that understanding or basic conceptual clarity with respect to factors is given in the first two chapters, which forms the first bucket. Then you come towards how to create a portfolio. So you've realized an asset, you've realized a factor, but in when we talk about portfolio management or when we talk about the workings of the bank, it is more focused on the portfolio of which is created by different types of asset. So over here, the ideal logic would be how to create the portfolio. And when you're creating the portfolio as a manager, your focus would be on to create alpha. Okay, and how do you make active management of the portfolio? That means you deviate from the benchmark and how do you try to earn active return? That is alpha. So that is basically the core concept of these chapters. And then you have a bigger chunk of chapter which is more focused on the risk related to portfolio. So once you've created a portfolio, how do you analyze the risk of the portfolio is given in these three, four chapters. And then finally, the bigger side of the uh, entire discussion. So we have talked about the risk of the portfolio. Now, suppose you are a fund house. How do you manage different fund managers who are managing different portfolios within your fund house? So that basically logic and whatever risk you face as a fund house. And that is being covered in these kind of chapters. I'll be walking you through the bifurcation in detail now. So if I look at the first bucket, which I created, what's the factor and factor related chapter. Okay, that is primarily your factor theory and factors. Out of these two, factor theory is very, very important for your exam. Okay, let me uh, take you towards the next bucket that we talked about, the portfolio related chapters. When we say portfolio related, it is more about constructing of the portfolios. Okay, in this, the alpha and portfolio construction chapter. Alpha chapter is slightly important for your exam perspective. And this portfolio construction chapter, ideally when you are reading, you should refer to either GARP or for example, my notes for referring to this chapter because Swager, the, in the Swager, the concepts are not given as easily as it could have been explained. Next, let us go towards the next bucket, which is basically your portfolio risk related part. So once you have created the portfolio, now they're taking you towards the risk part. So there are There is a chapter of portfolio risk analytics, very, very important chapter for your exam performance, okay? And the VAR and VAR risk budgeting. Now these chapters, you can expect some questions 
uh, uh, coming towards from the quantitative side. That means calculation driven questions can come from these two chapters. And also they would like to connect it to either a credit risk or market risk concept also when they're talking about the portfolio in the exam. Okay, there is one more chapter which is risk monitoring and performance. This is not as important, only one or two concepts from the book is slightly important for the exam. Let us talk about the last bucket that we created. So if you are, a, for example, a hedge fund and you have so many fund managers, you have a fund house and you want to understand how these individual managers are working or how, the, uh, how do you do due diligence of these managers? How do you identify which manager is doing perfect? So all of this is connected in this chapter. Out of that, if you look at the flow of the uh, section, okay, they're talking about how to evaluate different portfolios. Then they are also giving you some basic idea of hedge fund. Okay, this hedge fund related concept is again a repeat from your FRM level two, sorry, FRM level one, where they've given you a slight introduction to hedge funds when they were talking about fund management. Over here, they have got in detail of hedge funds, uh, the, the pricing function, and also they've given you the basic strategies that the hedge funds use. The important chapters are your Bernie Madoff. This is a case study where there was a Ponzi scheme that was been running in US, which was related to portfolio management. And that created a lot of uh, mistrust in the market. And hence this chapter becomes slightly important in this bucket. And to a certain extent, extent your portfolio performance evaluation. So we have done the basic uh, bifurcations of chapter and I've given you the order of revision also. Now you would notice that the order is similar to what, what has been given in the book. Now in this book, there's no need to change the way of prepar preparation. The reason being the book flows you from starting from a single factor, takes you to an asset, then takes you towards a portfolio, then you takes it towards the portfolio risk and then towards the entire fund house level. That's why there's no need to change the order of the book in the way the chapters are given. Let me talk about the important concepts from each chapter, okay? The first chapter, which is your, your, your factor theory chapter, from this, this chapter is basically a continuation of your FRM level one. Because over there, when we talked about modern portfolio theory, we talked about capital allocation line. We also talked about capital market line. We also talked about the cap and theory. Now this chapter, or this chapter focuses on why CAPM was a failure and how exactly, okay, what, what are things we can learn from CAPM and how exactly the risk and the factor is being explained. So that is a basic theory. And I have highlighted one learning objective from this chapter, which gives you the connection with the CAPM logic, okay, and how the different benefits and the shortcomings of CAPM is explained in that chapter. That is important for your exam. Factor theory, the factors, the second chapter. When we talk about this in the entire chapter, they are talking about different factors which impacts your portfolio. But out of that, in the end, they focus more on the value nesting and momentum investing, which can get tested in your exam. So you can focus on that part also. Alpha, which is your third chapter. Now the focus of this chapter is to understand how an alpha is derived. Okay, so first and foremost, to understand this chapter, you'll have to understand identification of alpha purely and purely depends upon what benchmark you have chosen. So this learning objective, the, the learning objective which is mentioned over here, this gives you an idea about that. If you have chosen an incorrect benchmark, your alpha might look very high, which is incorrect representation of the returns of the portfolio. Then there is also, there is a fundamental law of active management, which is important for the exam. You can mark this as star. Okay, this is also coming from this chapter. And it basically tells you if you cannot predict better in terms of your portfolio's return, then you should be able to hit more. That means you should be able to change your portfolio more often so that there is a good chance that you might end up being an, getting an optimal portfolio. So these were the first three chapters. We're gonna be moving towards the next chapter now, the portfolio construction, the fourth chapter from the entire series. So over here, the major focus of the chapter is to help you understand how exactly a portfolio is created, what all different methods are created. And out of that, there is one concept, which is refining of alpha, which can get tested in your exam. Okay, hence I've, I have highlighted it over here for your reference. There is also an optimal no trade region. So it takes into consideration 
the transaction cost because if you are going to constantly keep on changing the composition of your portfolio then there is a very very high chances that your transaction cost itself will be very big so that even you might not be able to generate any profit so this entire concept which is important and this has been tested in the past exams is and making you realize that when you should buy or sell an asset when you do that you have to take into consideration the transaction cost so it creates a range through which you can make the transaction or not that has been covered in that chapter in that concept the fifth chapter is important from the exam perspective and there are a lot of other var related concepts the calculation driven concept but out of that the component var is very very important that can get tested in your exam heavily and also the logic of marginal var how exactly it is different when you are managing a portfolio okay or creating the portfolio that means when you are looking at the portfolio from the risk perspective or the creation of the portfolio so that is being covered over here both the concepts are important for your exam the next chapter which is your sixth chapter which is var and risk budgeting okay in this chapter uh, it's primarily a lot of theory connecting it back to your level 1 var concepts and all over here there is an important concept which focuses on policy mix and the active risk management which i feel can get tested in some or the other way in theory in your exam so i have highlighted that entire learning objective for your reference let me take you towards the next chapter which is your risk monitoring and risk performance okay so if i'm not wrong this is a seven chapter describe how risk monitoring can work so over here the logic is that you've already created a portfolio you've already talked about the risk now how exactly uh, are we going to keep on tracking or keep on monitoring the risk so that it achieves our purpose of having a risk appetite level and also the return so that is being covered over here so i have highlighted certain basic concepts of the chapter at the start and also the liquidity duration logic which is which is important for the exam the next chapter the eighth chapter primarily is the portfolio performance okay this is where you have created the portfolio now you are going to be testing how exactly the portfolio is doing in terms of come in competing while competing with the other portfolios so there are there are three four concepts in this entire chapter the most important of out of them is the m square measure the logic has to be very very clear for the exam and also the wait time weighted return okay both of these i feel is important and hence i have highlighted it for the concept over here the next chapter the hedge fund this is primarily theory not to worry much about this chapter you can read this chapter two or three times before the exam and then it's almost done the major major thing that this chapter focuses on is strategy which is connected to your level 1 the next chapter which is performance due diligence okay over here they are talking about if, if i am going to check a, uh, on a particular fund manager if i want to pick up a fund manager what all checks i should do this is also more or less theory driven chapter but i have highlighted one important learning objective which can get tested in terms of a case study or in terms of a theoretical bigger question the last chapter of this uh, book is Bur finding bernie madoff this is what i said uh, comparing to the logic of the case study which is been given over here and how exactly the market can identify frauds okay and how exactly we can uh, make sure that we don't fall for such kind of things so that is being covered over here in this concept okay so this is where we complete the discussion on the important concepts for each chapter for the exam let me take you towards what are the top 5 chapters which i feel can come in your exam okay the first and foremost like i said it's a factor chapter i feel there can be some good theory related concepts that can come portfolio risk analytic chapter this this is where you will find a lot of calculation driven concepts being tested var and risk budgeting is also important but you will have to be very clear on the concept of var which is again connecting it back to level 1 okay portfolio performance evaluation primarily because there are there are calculation driven stuff and especially the m square part which can get tested and finally this is a case study which i expect the questions to come from this chapter this is the top these are the top five chapters which i feel can come in your exam for your frm level 2 from this book the next concept we are going to be talking about the top five important concepts across the book which i feel is really really interesting and important for the exam the first being value investing and momentum investing the second being the fundamental law gringold's fundamental law is a formula 
which uh, is basically can get tested in the exam. Optimal no trade region, like I've already highlighted. This is important for the exam. This has been tested in the past. Exam component var, very, very high chances. You will find some question connected to it. And M square related concept can also get tested. And finally, I feel that there, is, there can be some concept related to policy mix and active risk management. Some, some tips from my side to prepare for the exam, okay? The, uh, make sure that this entire book is slightly understanding based. It is not like operation risk. It is not like liquidity risk where you have to read a lot of concept. It is more about understanding the con content in deeper level. That is what is required. Make sure that you solve the question bank of this book properly. And also when you're solving, there is a high chance that you will you would find uh, questions on formula driven or questions or calculation driven question coming from the exam. So please make sure that you look at this book from the calculation driven perspective at a heavy side. Okay, so these were the quick tips for the exam. Now a quick introduction for people who don't know us. We are for intelligence, we help people to clear FRM and CFA level one and level two exams in, in the first attempt. And we have live online lectures also going on for your FRM level one and level two, okay? Where we cover so many topics and so many things, live sessions, question banks, then sectional test and all of it. And we also provide mock papers, recorded lectures. We also have a video lecture package for your level one and level two for people who cannot come to the live session, they can access to our content through our video lecture package, okay? If you are looking out to prepare for your exam, for example, for FRM level one or level two, if we, we might have some free material which we can share with you, which can help you to prepare for the exam in a better way, okay? And if you're looking out to have a study plan for your FRM level two, then we can WhatsApp on this number and we will be happy to help you to prepare for your exam, okay? We also have a Telegram channel, which you can subscribe to, okay? Which wherein we keep on sharing the updates related to the exam. In case of any queries, you can reach out to us on this number on WhatsApp and we'll try to address it back to you as soon as possible. Okay, I hope this session was useful for you guys. Thank you very much for joining in. In case you have any specific queries with respect to the content or if you want us to do any videos in the future, then you can let us know uh, that in your comment section. Thank you very much, guys.